Around 10,000 years ago, the retreat of glaciers in North America brought important changes to both Kentucky and the continent at large. Coniferous forests which spanned the northern hemisphere gave way to mixed deciduous forests, quite similar to present-day Kentucky woodlands. This same change in climate also resulted in the extinction of Pleistocene megafauna. It is these changes to the environment, and also in people's material culture, which archaeologists use to mark the end of the Paleo-Indian period and the beginning of the Early Archaic period. One of the most noticeable changes in the archaeological record is the form and diversity of projectile points and other types of stone tool technology. Kirk projectile points are one of the many Early Archaic point styles which are common across Kentucky and much of eastern North America. In this video, I replicate a Kirk point and discuss the prehistory of the early archaic period in Kentucky. To begin making a Kirk projectile point, I select a piece of Fort Payne shirt, one of the most abundant types of flint in Kentucky and the Mid-South, and begin removing flakes. As you can see, a few flakes have already been removed to test the quality of the stone. Many of these initial flakes are aimed at establishing a consistent edge around the piece, which allows for me to remove larger flakes that will thin it down. Archaeological sites with Kirk cluster projectile points date from 9,500 to 8,800 radiocarbon years before present and occur over a large geographic area, from the southern Great Lakes all the way down to the Florida Peninsula and from the Mississippi Corridor to the Atlantic Coast which includes Kentucky. The Kirk Archaeological Horizon includes multiple styles of similar projectile points or hefted bifaces, including Kirk Corner Notch, Stillwell, Pine Tree, Palmer, and others. These Kirk Cluster points share common features, like triangular blades with haft regions formed by corner notching, as well as ground basal edges and serrated blades. Kirk cluster hafted bifaces were most likely used as projectile points for hunting large to medium sized game, but were also used as knives. It is thought they served as spear tips for atlatls, otherwise known as spear throwers. The portion of wood on which points were hafted was likely a detachable piece called a foreshaft, which could function like a knife handle. With the Pleistocene megafauna now extinct, white tailed deer would have been the most important animal that Kirk points were used to hunt although elk, bison, and bear would have been other large animals they hunted, along with smaller animals like turkey and rabbits. I'm now striking off large flakes to thin my biface. I remove small flakes from the edge to create a platform, which I abrade with a coarse stone until it is slightly dull, then strike to remove a flake. I repeat the process, removing flakes from all edges to evenly thin and shape the biface towards becoming a Kirk point. Projectile points were far from the only tools Kirk Horizon people in Kentucky made. Bifaces, which are often then made into Kirk points, were tools themselves. Adzes, which are woodworking tools with horizontal cutting bits, are found at Kirk and other types of early archaic sites. End scrapers are also found at sites throughout Kentucky, and these tools would have been crucial for processing hides into leather and buckskin. Flakes were also retouched into a number of different shapes to fill the gaps in their toolkits. Stone tools represent just the tip of the iceberg of the material culture of Kirk and other early arcade cultures. However, the objects they made from bone, and especially wood, preserve poorly in the archaeological record, and only survive under special conditions. One kind of organic object that has preserved at a few special Kirk sites throughout the South are the remains of charred nutshells. The deciduous forests that were becoming the dominant vegetation on this landscape included species like hickory, acorn, walnut, and many more, providing an easily foraged, readily available source of food for earlier cake people. Plant processing tools such as mortars and pestles, or monozematates, are very uncommon at Kirk archaeological sites, although there are more frequently pitted stones which likely served as nut cracking blocks and hammers. The lack of nut processing tools indicates earlier cake period peoples utilized this food source less intensively than later groups of people. Charred remains of hickory nutshells at Kirk archaeological sites do indicate that this was still an important part of their diet. 
Other plant food remains have been found at these early archaic sites and include acorns, persimmon, hackberry, and wild legumes, although these likely represent just the cusp of the plant foods they foraged. As my biface has become thinner, more and more platforms have been prepared with pressure flaking to ensure controlled percussion flake removals. This continues until it is near the final shape and thickness. I then use a tool called a pressure flaker, which removes small flakes, but does so in a very controlled manner. Pressure flaking is great for the final contouring and shaping of the biface, as well as creating a sharp edge. Paleo-Indian period people in Kentucky were moving vast distances in search of resources. Early archaic period people also moved long distances, but seemed to have been occupying a more defined territory, making seasonal rounds between upland and lowland resources as they became available. Occupying such a fairly large region meant that current groups were mobile and didn't occupy specific areas for extended periods of time, even if they kept coming back to the same places. This is reflected in the archaeological record by a lack of evidence for intensive site occupations, such as hearths, charcoal pits, middens, and other archaeological features. Now with this point nearing completion, it is time for me to make the notches, or haft, of this kirk point. I alternate between removing notching flakes of the bison rib pressure flaker and using indirect percussion with a flat antler tool. With each notch flake I remove, I flip the biface over and remove the next from the opposite face. I also alternate between each notch to try to keep them as even in depth as possible. As I finish shaping the base and serrate the edges of this Kirk Point replica, I reflect on how early archaic people who used this technology would have utilized a similar forced environment to what surrounds me. The Kentucky they lived in would have also had deciduous forests with similar animals to today, which lacked the Pleistocene megafauna and climate of their Paleo-Andean ancestors. Many of the sites they left behind were similar in function to what I just did, places where they flintknapped kirk points and other tools. Yet, the stone artifacts they left behind tell only a fraction of the story of how they lived their lives in the early archaic period. <laughs>